Welcome back to the Creation Station, everybody. Today I've got a really interesting subject for you guys, which is how to get this Brazilian feel, that particular swing that they only have in Brazil, into your productions, to something that is just far more interesting and musical and lively and soulful than those rigid, mathematically perfect 16th notes that we have available in most digital audio workstations. And here is a little example. What we're listening to is a few grooves that I recorded from an application called Rio Grooves, which I highly recommend. Let me scroll up here real quick and show it to you. This is an application I've had a lot of fun with uh, to create like Brazilian uh, ensemble grooves. Here, this is a sample from Escola de Samba. And so you have the, all the individual in ingredients that make up this beautiful samba bateria that's playing there. And you can already hear that these uh, beautifully recorded instruments aren't playing perfectly mathematical 16th. There's some kind of a push and pull in those rhythms. And the Brazilians call that the swing, and they spell it S-U-I-N-G-E. It's very evident here on this instrument called the repenique or hepenique. There's something in there that is just inherently swinging in a different way that there's no parallel in our culture. Also here in the tambourine group, you can hear it also. Let's add two instruments together. And that just is it just is so much more impressive than if this were rigidly quantized. But be it as it may, I used uh, two of these instruments. Uh, one of them was uh, the repinique, and the other one was the group of tambourines, those two last instruments, as a groove example. And let me show you what I did. So I triggered from this application one of the sounds. And all I needed to, to work with was basically one bar, because the, the pulse repeats after one bar. Well, now, isn't that interesting? Do you see those fine lines that run through this waveform, which I'm magnifying right here? You see there's 16 lines running through this whole thing, and they're very mathematically even. But look at the waveform. The waveform is strongly divergent. It's on on the downbeat. The next three small beats it's off, then it's back on, then it's off again for the next three beats, or it's actually only two visible. But then, so it seems to be every fourth, sixteenth, it seems to be back on. And everything in between, the time fabric is completely flexed. And I'm going to explain a little later where that came from. I only know how to do this in Pro Tools. So if you have another workstation, you may have to find out and see if this is even possible. I think Logic can do it also. But this is the good thing about Pro Tools. Pro Tools can adapt grooves from one native feel, and then you can superimpose them on your quantization grid. So here's the recording of this group, this tambourine group. And I just was able to extract one bar and then loop them together so I have more than just one bar to listen to, to see if the bar kind of connects nice with the copied bar and so forth, which is important. I'll explain it to you in a second here. Let's listen. Okay, so that's good to analyze. Those roll nicely from one bar to the next. So that means there's not going to be a stumble after the end of each bar. That's why I wanted to make sure that you know, whatever bar I kind of distilled out of that particular performance was a perfect bar that can be looped. So in Pro Tools, there is an application that's built inside of Pro Tools called the Beat Detective. What I have to do with the Beat Detective is to first of all point it to where the audio begins that I'm going to analyze, which is over here. I'm going to capture that selection. And then I'm going to go and hit bar and beat marker generation. Here's what this does. 
this will render like basically one impulse or one MIDI, yeah, it's basically like a MIDI note that it creates for each one of these peaks in the waveform that you can see over here. You can also, in the Beat Detective later on, move those around a little bit. And so here I can move them around. So I may have to do a little editing after the fact. This looks pretty good, but there's one missing right over here. So I'm just going to click on the waveform, generate one, slide, slide it around. Yep, and here is one that is missing. I'm going to place them around about here. And this result here is now ready to be fed into the Groove Template Extraction. For that, I have to go to the second option here, which is Groove Template Extraction. And then I'm going to simply hit Extract, and I'm going to save it to disk. Uh, let me go to my own grooves here. Call it Repenique. groove number two. Now how can we apply this feel to our productions? All right, let's move to the next chapter in this video, which is my Pandero. I created a Pandero instrument, but I just wanted to show you real quick this Pandero, if I play the keyboard, and these are the notes. These are the most essential notes of a Pandero. That is basically the, the muted slap or muted thumb. And then there's a heel, and then there's the open hide. There's even a cool rattle in there. So what I did now is I basically recorded that very pattern into this track below. Take a look, listen to it by itself, and I'm going to just show it to you how I programmed it in in rigid quantization which is normally what I quantize to. I use 16th notes a lot. It sounds like this. Okay, so that's the very basis of a samba groove played with the pandero. But there's no life to it because it's rigid 16ths and rigid 16ths, sorry, that just don't work for Brazilian music. So let's go with these, with these two bars here and now look into the fields where we saved that feel called Repenic Groove Number 2. And now I can, in this quantizing window where I selected Repenic Groove Number 2, I can decide how strong I want to force this 16th pattern to conform to the Repenic Groove that we heard earlier. All right, how about if we apply 35% of that groove and you see the MIDI notes changing position. Look, there, that changed position. If I click it again, it'll add another 35%. So let's see where it feels comfortable. It already sounds more human, doesn't it? Now let me add another 35%. Now it is, that's a total of 70%. That's pretty strong. That's not bad. Let's turn the Repenica back on and listen to the original performance. Yeah, that swing is even quite a bit stronger. There's a lot of, of push and pull in there. And a lot of the time fabric is very distorted. It's almost like a curtain of time rather than just a sheet of even mathematical time. Let's look at that together, and I'm going to turn the, uh, the MIDI Pandero on, and with a 70% quantization, see how close they are to one another. I can hear that the MIDI Pandero is still much more even. I'm just going to give it another 35%, so we're now at 100% practically. We're conforming exactly to the Repenic uh, groove, or the time fabric thereof. There you go. Now you can see they're living in the same time. Let's say, for example, you've programmed a samba beat on a uh, MIDI drum kit. Then you could do the exact same thing. In that case, you would just simply highlight all the MIDI notes of the samba groove and apply this kind of quantization to it. 
All right, everybody, let's look at what the sound difference is between a basic Brazilian brush samba, which I just programmed only for demonstration purposes, so it's not perfect, but what it sounds like if it's in 16th notes versus with a little Brazilian feel in it. Here, first of all, is the pattern I programmed. And excuse me, like I said, it's just for demonstration purposes, but listen to this. So it should have a little, little bit more variation on the velocities in the snare drum, I agree. But it should, uh, it should suffice. Uh, now let me add about 35% of Brazilian swing from the Hepinique pattern. Totally different picture, isn't it? Less robotic and uh, just more human sounding. Let's see what a shaker sounds like. I found a simple shaker loop and quantized it to that same feel. It, this came from Stylus. Let's take a look at it and listen. So there's definitely some swing in it. If you quantize this directly, let's take a look at this. You can actually see the time displacement that has taken place here. See here are the 16ths. See how the MIDI notes are definitely not on the 16th. You see this? There. They're definitely displaced quite strongly, depending on how many percent of that Brazilian swing I impart on this particular MIDI performance. But you'll notice that none of those ingredients work for Brazilian music or any of the Latin American styles if you use just straight ahead 16th notes. It's just our time fabric is wrong for that. It's pretty much wrong for anything. Let's take a look at what the shaker now sounds in combination with the drums. Liking it. How about if we bring our Pandero back in, which is swinging, as we know, at 100%. The drum kit is about 35% quantized to the Repinic groove, the Pandero 100%, uh, and the Shaker about 75%. So I'm always varying till there's a certain rhythmic glue happening between those instruments. Here we go. All right, so um, like I promised you guys, you know, this also works with an upright bass. So I played a simple samba pattern into this whole equation here and also quantized it with just a little bit, maybe about 35%. Here it is. Sounds different, right? It sounds alive. It sounds like this is a really good basis for a track. So just out of fun, I just played without any quantization a Fender Rhodes and added it to the whole mix. So this was just improvised, thrown together in about 15 minutes, not more. And it's got a certain looseness in the feel. And you could push it quite a bit further. And uh, I noticed, though, that in the process that certain instruments need more of that swing. Other instrument, instruments need less. Certain instruments need to be pushed to the front end of the beat. Others to the back end of the beat. But all in all, you know, if you go back to the sound of just straight at 16s in this context. Let me just take the roads out and then highlight um, bass, shaker, and the drum kit and put a straight, force it to straight 16s. Listen to the difference. Okay, now it sounds like, like whatever, a European umpa band is imitating samba. <laughs> So let's undo and check it out again. Do 
there's just a life between each of these segments of so each quarter notes practically has an, an extraordinary amount of life uh, and uh, rhythmic displacement built in if i were to summarize what the Brazilian groove consists of. It's almost um, an amalgamation out of two different cultural imprints, a binary and a tertiary cultural imprint. One of them is in triplets and the other one is just one, two, one, two, one, two. And if I were to kind of sort of, let's see, play this on my MIDI instrument here, I'm just going to take two of the rattle notes here. So that's three against two, right? Let me show you real quick the tambourine group in a faster tempo. See how it sounds first of all? And while this sounds like 16th notes, it is 16th notes, but it's a time fabric that's distorted and it has an imprint of these cultures in them. I slowed this down artificially for you guys to hear. Listen to this and tell me if that doesn't sound similar to, to this three against two thing. I slowed it down dramatically. Here, listen to this. Doesn't that sound like a little bit like three against two, just an amalgamated version thereof. So I think that's an easy way to describe it. So we've got ta 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 ta. There is a triplet very strongly amalgamated into the binary rhythm. Anything that I can do to avoid living in this world of rigid mathematical sixteenths is a good thing for me. Let me also show you what happens, how depressing it almost sounds when you hear the same kind of groove quantized in rigid sixteenths. Okay, listen to the end and I'll give you a sign where it changes over to the rigid quantization, to the mathematical quantization with straight sixteenths. Here we go. Doesn't that sound like a machine gun and completely mechanical and robotic all of a sudden? That's because you got used to the feel of the uh, Brazilian swing. It's a fantastic way to be able to adopt the true inner feel, the inner time fabric of other cultures' musical time fabric into our own. All right, that was my first basic introduction into how to grab the Brazilian feel, the Brazilian swingy, and make it available to your productions as long as you work in the MIDI realm. Once again, this was inspired by the fantastic grooves that are inside of this software called Rio Grooves, which you can find um, in the native instruments, uh, virtual instruments uh, selection. I think it's even part of Complete 13, if I'm not mistaken, and I had a lot of fun working with that software and analyzing the different fields because as you can see the Repinica and the tambourine group had different swing fields into them, one stronger than the other. So that's it for now. I hope you found this interesting and enlightening and somehow usable for your productions. Uh, like I shared once before, this Pandero is available on uh, our website. You just come over to the link in the description. You can buy it right there. It's $29.95 and a very, very usable instrument. And uh, I had some uh, Brazilian musicians comment on how it, in their opinion, was the most realistic one available on the market. And it's really cheap at $29.95. Um, if you found this video helpful and enlightening and inspiring on any level, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, stay tuned for the next video. This is Stefan Oberhoff signing out from the Creation Station. Keep swinging and stay healthy and inspired. Peace.